Hello. Well, it looks like I was a bit previous with my congratulations to Asia Bibi, doesn't it? According to the Independent newspaper today, Bibi's husband has begged Theresa May for asylum in the UK for himself and his family and his wife. I'm not entirely sure that the UK is the safest place they can be, actually. However, perhaps it's less immediately dangerous for them. And again, according to The Independent, it looks like there's been a bit of horse trading going on in the Pakistan government, with Imran Khan, the current Prime Minister, making a deal with the Islamist party, uh, what are they called? Tehreek e Labaik, whereby Bibi has been put on what's called the exit control list, which means she can't leave the country, no doubt, with hilarious consequences. Wilson Chowdhury of the British Pakistani Christian Association said that this is the equivalent of signing Bibi's death warrant. No shit, Sherlock. Indeed, it looks to me that by releasing Bibi from jail, but not letting her out of the country, it's a bit like letting someone free by popping open the doors of the shark cage. So, it's pretty obvious that the Tariq e Labaik wants to give someone a chance to do away with her. And in return for this concession, they've apologised for the riots now. Isn't that nice? Isn't that heartwarming? And they've called off their dogs. Um, I mean, of course, they've called off their supporters and told them to go home. So here we have the terrifying situation of a country that has the nuclear bomb being run effectively by government at the mercy of a population-wide mob controlled by a bunch of religious fanatics. And we think North Korea is run by a dangerous lunatic. As a slightly amusing sidelight to this, Imran Khan was on a visit to China recently and instead of the name of the Chinese capital, Beijing, uh, being put up on the screen, the Pakistan Television Corporation put up a picture of Khan on his visit there uh, with the word begging over the top of it. This has caused some amusement in Pakistan among those who still have a sense of humour, but it's quite appropriate considering how short Pakistan is on cash. Meanwhile, Asiya Bibi's lawyer has had to run from the country because he's had so many death threats. <coughs> and I agree, that's the most sensible thing to do. Assassination seems to be what almost every political and religious group in Pakistan thinks of first when they have any sort of a problem. Discussion just doesn't enter into it. A couple of days ago, a religious leader was killed in his bedroom while he was taking an afternoon nap. And I believe this had nothing at all to do with the Bibi case, since the victim, um, Maulana Samuel Haq, was an Islamist preacher and educator, if you can call what he dished out and education, and he was known as the father of the Taliban. So he was certainly not killed for being too soft on the rules. Now, back to Bibi. <coughs> oh dear. <clears throat> Her case has caught the imagination of the world, but religious bullying and murders are a fact of life in Pakistan. The reason we don't hear of them too much is that they happen on the streets, down dark alleys, and in private houses. When the British Empire was in charge of the place, the locals acted with some self-control and the British judicial system ensured the rule of law. But bit by bit, as Pakistan has got further away from its colonial past, it's reverting to the sort of recourse to Muslim mob violence that has characterised nearly every Muslim society in the world. <clears throat> And these hysterical outbursts over someone who's being pressured to convert, well, let's face it, 
Bibi could have solved all her problems by converting, couldn't she? If she'd have done that, there'd have been no more talk about blasphemy. Anyway, these episodes of murderous hysteria are by no means new in the Arab and Muslim world. Bibi's case reminded me of a painting I came across while I was studying art. It's called Execution of a Moroccan Jewess, I'll put it up here, and it's by the French painter Alfred de Ondeck. De Ondeck, I suppose, yeah. <clears throat> And it records the death of a young woman called Sol Haruel in Morocco. Like Bibi, she'd been pestered by a neighbour's daughter to convert. And when she didn't, this neighbour's daughter finally told everyone that she had actually converted Haruel. Of course, that meant the girl was being an apostate by staying with her Jewish parents and she was arrested. I don't think that it's a coincidence that Sol Heruel was supposed to be astoundingly beautiful. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Asya Bibi is pretty good looking as well. As was said of Sol Heruel by the Arabs at the time, why should the Jews have such a beautiful woman? Anyway, Heruel stuck to her faith and refused to convert, even though the son of the Sultan who was astounded by her beauty, offered her marriage if she did convert. Uh, she didn't, and she was beheaded at the age of 17 in Fez in 1834. She wasn't the first, and as you can see from the case of Bibi, she wasn't the last. It seems that's the way things are done in Islam. I'm very grateful for financial contributions. But if you don't want to give money, you can still help a lot by sharing this and other videos I've made. Also, remember to check your subscription from time to time, as sometimes subscriptions get erased for one reason or another. Till next time.